I am really so distraught over this story. There are so many conflicting emotions. I don't even know where to go from here. Well, hello, my silky friends. Yeah, I, I know. Okay, before, <laughs> before you say, say. I know. Before you say anything, I am tough on child predators, chomos. I've been very tough in the past, and I don't back down from that. But this story today was just so heartbreaking. And all I keep asking myself is why? Why? And I think I know the answers. I really do. But also, the answers I have are not good enough. So, what do we, where do we go from here? I saw this story this morning from the Roy's report. And again, y'all know how I feel about Chomos. I'm tough on them. I'm harsh. I'm not sorry. But this, this is still heartbreaking. Okay. So, we're talking about a Tennessee pastor. And this comes from the Roy's report. And I'm just going to say, if you are not familiar with the Roy's report, then, I mean, check it out. It is always disturbing, in my opinion. But, it, you know, we need to know. So, this guy right here, his name is David Mark Baker. And this says a Tennessee pastor who worked to restore pastors caught in a Carnal Sin took his life hours after being released from jail on an accusation he assaulted a child. Ten Tennessee authorities said David Mark Baker Sr. took his life on September 11th, the day before the 57-year-old married pastor, married pastor, was arrested on an accusation that he chomoed a child under 12. Under 12. An affidavit filed in Baker's case accused the minister of aggravated S.A. Mm, battery, okay? And this occurred by touching a child, the top part of her. I don't know how to say this. I'm trying to be family friendly. Um, underneath her clothing, though, okay? So this wasn't an accidental brush, you know, whatever. This was underneath her clothing uh, between 2013 through... 2015. Missy Ray, an employee of Maury County Sheriff's Department, said that the SA allegation remains under investigation and she could not comment on specifics. Baker had served as lead pastor of Family Baptist Church in Columbia. His name had been removed from the church's website, social media sites, including the church's Facebook and YouTube. And Baker's personal Facebook page uh, is inactive. Here, of course, is a picture of the First Baptist Church in Columbia. Now, he is also associated with Fallen in Grace, a restoration ministry for pastors involved in sexual misconduct. The website sells Baker's book on overcoming sin. Court records show Baker was taken into custody around 4.40 p.m. on September 10th and released from the Maury County Jail around 3.15 a.m., on September 11th on a $200,000 bail. Okay, so he wasn't even in there a full 24 hours. The sheriff's office did not have Baker's bail conditions available. Now, they did say that in a case such as this, the suspect is typically prevented from possessing a weapon or going near the victim, of course. Um, they released a statement saying that a code silver alert was activated at a approximately 12.45 p.m. on September 11th, almost 12 hours after Baker was released from jail. A code silver alert indicates a firearm has been discharged on campus or a person is confirmed or suspected of possessing a weapon on the premises. Baker entered a public restroom at the medical center where he administered a self-inflicted wound to his chest, discharging the weapon twice. I, I don't know, like, was that accidental? I have to wonder, like, did was it automatic? Because I'm thinking after the first time, you're not going to do it the second time. Um, but 
according to the staff, they initiated life sa- life-saving medical treatment, but of course, in an injury like that, it's not surprising that he succumbed. Now let's go ahead to this one. This is from News Channel 5 in Nashville. Now, according to this article, he also ran for mayor in 2022. All right, I'm going to stop there as far as reading the reports. Um, Apparently, it would seem that this was a very viable accusation. Obviously, they had enough evidence for him to have a $200,000 bond. uh, Wow, that's a lot. Um, I'm going to say the evidence against him was very good. And, you know, here's where I come to. I mean, he was in a ministry to help other people overcome this. So my question is, did he get attacked by the same demons or did he always have them? And is that why he was in this particular ministry? You know, if you are in the church at all, you know that people who overcome addictions or problems or, you know, just people who have been in jail often are the ones who do jail ministry because you feel like you can reach the people that you understand. And that is correct. That is right. That's what we're supposed to do. However, in a case like this, it's my opinion that if he was having any battles or struggles with that, he should have gone to the elders of the church. He should have stepped down even temporarily and just said, I'm having these thoughts. I'm having these desires. Um, And perhaps it would have spelled the end of his pastoral career. But if if he had not acted on it, I don't think it would have. I just feel like that sometimes we are not able to really express what we go through. You know, the Bible tells us to confess our sins one to another. So did he tell anybody? You know, because as a body, we are supposed to, you know, be able to lend healing to each other. I realize in a case like this, it is so terribly embarrassing and it's not something that you want to admit. And there's probably very few people that you feel you can admit something like this to. And I would agree, you know, it's hard to find a trustworthy person. However, now we're in this situation and I am so sorry to his family um, for everything. They must be going through pure and utter hell right now not only from the charges and all this information, but now from his loss. It really grieves my soul. Again, not excusing what he did or the grief that that family and that victim is going through. But how do we stop this? This is my question. You know, how do we stop the bleeding? Because even though I disagree and I'm harsh and yeah, I'll come out with another video where I'm blasting somebody in the same situation who's been caught. I'm sure I will because it's wrong. But yet, as much as I say that, we forget sometimes that we, the church, are a body as a whole. And you know what I'm seeing? I am seeing so many of these reports, you know, a chomo after chomo after chomo in places of pastoral leadership. So why? We have to ask ourselves as the body of Christ, what is wrong with us? What We're sick. We're sick. And I say we, even though I don't, you know, have that problem. But apparently it is not just a small thing. It is a worldwide problem. There's another article on the Roy's Report about a pastor in the Philippines. And I'm probably going to do a video on that. That's even far worse than this. But again, why is this happening? What sickness is in the body? Because I feel like we can attack individual pastors and, you know, render judgment and all that. But what bothers me is what is the deeper problem? Because it's like a cancer in the body of Christ right? This sexual sin and the ability of leaders not to be able to overcome it or even feel like they can talk to somebody before it goes that far. So I don't know. What do you think? This is heartbreaking to me. I did not know this man at all. Okay. 
I have no dogs in this fight, but I feel like as a fellow Christian and human, for someone to come to the conclusion that this is the only way out, you know, maybe because of the embarrassment, would that follow him the rest of his life? Life, absolutely. It sure would. As it should. To protect other little ones. But at the same time, it breaks my heart. You know? If it was a one and done case, you know, I don't think it would bother me as much. Still grieve for the family, don't get me wrong. But as you look at the news reports that come out daily, I mean, literally daily, of misconduct with children between not just pastors, that's the worst, but police officers, teachers, my God, people in leadership that are supposed to protect our kids. And I think we need to pray as a body and start asking God, what is going on? What hell has been unleashed on the body? And what can we do to stop it? Stop the bleeding, fix the problem, exercise this demonic hold that has a lot of people enslaved. So I don't know. Tell me what you think. Um, Leave it down in the comments. And again, I am sorry to the families of both the victim and the perpetrator. It is just a horrific uh, situation on all sides. I appreciate you all very much. Whatever you do, stay safe and stay silky. Bye-bye.